Yeah, we've got a Lenovo small form factor all in one board. I've gone over it visually. I can't find anything obvious. So I'm going to go for the infrared here and see if anything shows up. It is getting voltage to the um, switch. So we've got a 3.3, we've got our 5, we've got our standby, all that sort of stuff. But nothing seems to be happening when we switch power, try to power it up. So uh, switch over to infrared and see if we have any luck. Alright, we've got a little bit of a heat building up just here. Now I can feel that. It looks like it's building up over there too. Just see if there's anywhere else on the board I can see that might be coming up in temperature. I can't feel anything there, but I'm going to mark it. Okay, and... I can definitely feel this one. I think something's going on on the underside as well. Oh yeah. Ah, uh, yeah, that's going straight to the CPU. I think we've got a dead CPU. That's very sensitive, I can barely feel that. Yeah, all this area here is CPU, so that's really not a good sign. I can't see anything broken there. And if it was a shorted cap, it would actually shine out a lot more brightly. I think that's just getting hot because it's supplying power. Oh, shit. Of all the places for corrosion, seriously? What are the chances of that? What are the chances of that? I don't think I've ever tried to take one of these off, so I might as well give it a shot. That's just downright weird. I mean, can't make it any worse. Hmm. It's going to be tricky to get off. part of it. I may have to go for full physical removal. See if it's shorted still. Yeah. Yeah, this isn't really a normal board type removal, so <laughs> uh, cap removal, so you can't just you can't just come in here and knock it off, as it were. And for starters the substrate's probably not strong enough to handle that kind of physical impact. This is definitely one area where tweezers would be useful. I'm going to come in at 390 just to try and get some Okay, that's what I wanted. Just had to get that little bit of extra heat. Yeah. Kind of curious now if this will start up. We've probably got about five or six seconds that we can use without the fan on. See if we get a fan spin. Okay, no spin to start. We will try to do the on off switch. Yep, fan spin. Alright. There's probably no point trying to put another cap on there. I, I wouldn't have another cap like that. I, I don't know what its value or voltage or anything is. But best we clean up the corrosion we do see on there. Well, i got to say thank you to the thermal camera for spotting that one. I have no idea what actually got in on here. It certainly was corrosive, whatever it was. 
I can't even try and resolder that grayed out one. It's tempting, but unfortunately what's likely going to happen is it will just blob on top. It won't really... It won't really change the solder under there or fix the cap or anything. It'll just sit on top and you know, not do anything really. Okay. There's definitely still corrosion down in there. I want to be very careful though because if I dig in too far I may actually upset the CPU itself and we managed to get to boot so we don't want to make things worse. Okay, that's better. Well, that well and truly ate away that cap there. This one looks alright now. It's not pretty, but it works. I'm just going to have a look at the heatsink itself. And this foam adhesive rubber type substance actually ended up creating more dramas than what it was supposed to fix. My guess is it would absorb moisture and then that moisture has caused corrosion as you can see. So we actually need to take that off. Now I'm really hoping that capacitor doesn't... the lack of that capacitor doesn't cause us too much grief. It's a little bit too much paste. We'll squish it down, hopefully. Just give it a bit of a wiggle and that helps smooth out the paste. It gives us a better heat transfer profile. Okay. okay so that's up. And we are going to use our chipmunk here. The chipmunks are very handy because we can stick it into the USB ports like that and it'll tell us if the board is coming up with CPU activity without us having to plug in a bunch of other things. Instead, I can just put power on and then trigger that button. Okay, let's go. Okay, so we've got our power. Five volts is good. We're going to now wait for the green blinking light, which, there we go. That means the CPU is alive, so we're all set. That was different. It's kind of the nice thing sometimes about uh, taking a different road. You encounter some different sort of faults. All right, I'm out of here. Until next time, you all take care. I'll catch you later. thought you'd lost it. Uh-huh, I agree.